day 13. Today's uh, Sunday, March, I think 29th. Yeah, right on the money. It's about 5.30 p.m. Day 13 of the uh, Luzon Enhanced Community Quarantine. We're on lockdown here in the Philippines. Um, state of calamity. And we're just making the best of it, my friends. Uh, tonight, like I said, Sunday night. Times Square's been, uh, you know, for, for this lockdown, saw a little bit more people out shopping today. It is a Sunday. No real news to report. If you just watched a quick video clip I posted uh, from last night, you know, the the uh, Bronga officials, they're not messing around, all right? Quarantine means quarantine. And curfew means curfew. So at uh, 5 p.m., my curfew here is 5 p.m. And once it got dark, they came out with a, with a, squ a squad of people, and we're enforcing the, uh, the curfew. And they, they hem some people up. I don't know what happened. You know, what the... I think they were just taking names and uh, giving people warnings. But they were taking names. They had clipboards. Not really any news today. Nothing's changed. The uh, stores are still open. Not really any rumors floating around today that the ladies advised me of. And, you know, somebody made a comment, some jackass made a comment, you know, stop, stop spreading fake news. You know what? Big fuck you. Who, whoever the fuck you were, you are, fuck you. I'm not spreading fake news. This is more of a historical record. And so when I tell you what the rumors are, I'm pretty much prefacing it and I'm giving you the fucking lead up. Hey, this is just what the word on the street is. And you need that information so fucking 20 years from now, people can study these events, this event, and understand how the fucking rumors flowed, what the information the people perceived to be true, how they reacted to that information. You gotta have the whole fucking picture. So for some fucking jackass to come here and say, stop spreading fake news, a big fuck you, okay? I think I've fucking put enough disclaimers out there that I'm just telling you what I'm seeing, what people are saying, what the ladies are hearing. And this don't even come from me because I don't speak, read, write Tagalog. I'm referring to my two in-house experts here, these two ladies, to just tell, give me a report in the morning as to what they're saying on Facebook, the news, what are they hearing and what are they perceiving? And I'm fucking passing that on. So, you know, fuck you. Two more big fuck yous for a bullshit comment. You know, if I could, I don't got the time and I don't give a fuck, but if I run across that comment again, you're out of here. Cause you didn't watch the fucking video. You didn't watch the whole fucking video. You probably watched 10 seconds and then fucking jammed up your bullshit fucking comment. That's what I got to say about that, all right? If you only publish shit that's rosy, that's when history gets skewed, my friends. There's a big difference in me, you know, publishing a fucking totally fake article with the intent to mislead people on a fucking website, my website, or if I created a new site and started posting fake shit. But for me to report to you what the people are saying and what the people perceive, that's news. That's not fake news. That is news, those are facts. That's historical and historical record of the conditions on the ground during this fucking pandemic where I'm at. All right, so, so enough of that. Um, and I'll continue to tell you what the fucking rumors are, what the people are seeing, perceiving, what they believe. So if you can't uh, 
delineate that, just go somewhere else. Go back to Facebook, because I know the person who said that, you know, <laughs> you're a Facebook fucking monster. You gotta be. Anyhow. There's nothing new to report today. There really isn't. Um, Force G, normal day for him. You know, watching his ABC songs. He's over there right now in the hot tub. Let me give you a look at this dude. So, he's over there playing with his duckies and uh, basketball and just having a good time for his uh, for his, uh, his evening yard leave, his swim. Uh, Fatty Miles family's okay, Helen's family's okay. And you know, if you watch my video where I humped it up to Walter Mart, you know, I was trying to send their family some money via Palawan. I could, we couldn't get the mission accomplished. There's just too many people in line. And I got a lot of suggestions of how to send money. And, and I appreciate it, folks. I know all this, okay? Trust me, I know all this. I know how to Zoom people money. I know how to Western Union people money from my online account. I know all these alternatives. But... It's easier for them to go to Palawan and pick up the money. Very simple. I wanted to go for a walk. I wanted to show you guys uh, what was going on between here and Subic. I wanted to see what was going on in Subic. So don't think that I'm an idiot and I'm wasting my time by going up there, okay? I was gonna try to solve the mission easily that way. And it's easy for them to pick up uh, Palawan Express. Uh, but it didn't work out, so I came back home Shot him the money, Western Union. Within a few, min few minutes, uh, Fatima's family had picked up their money. They're good to go. But Helen's folks, where they were at, the Western Unions were closed. And so they spent a whole afternoon walking because where they're at, there's no fucking transportation, right? Um, they couldn't find a place, so they had to get up this morning and go find a place and stood in line for hours and they were they were able to uh, receive the money. So we've got the family squared away. They've got enough, uh, they've got enough rice at this point. Maybe not enough food to eat like kings and queens, but they've got enough rice now to ride this out uh, for a couple weeks at least. So everybody's settled, everybody's, everybody's uh, from my crew. Uh, are good to go and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, sent money on the back channels through PayPal certainly appreciate it and you know we are spreading the wealth to to our families here and just thank you very much I don't have the list in front of me I'll pull the list up at some time and and, and thank everybody one by one so that's that's the update folks um, I don't know anything else to report right now. I am going to cook some pork spaghetti like I cooked the uh, the other kind of chicken uh, Alfredo. And I'll just show you a quick blip because it's nothing, it's nothing different than what I usually cook. Before the sun goes down, I'll just give you a look. Um, I got a little pork chopped up. Obviously some spaghetti noodles. And I'm gonna saute that pork with some uh, onions, garlic, and tomatoes. Just a little water there. Cooking oil, stick of butter. <laughs> this dude, he loves playing with that basketball. He is, he is gonna be hanging out at the basketball court. And folks, if you know anything about the Philippines, Filipinos love basketball. That's the national sport next to uh, chicken fighting. But that, for some reason, that little boy, he just loves his basketball. All right, so I'll be cooking in the Lodge 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker on a induction burner. But I'm not going to plug this in until Forrest G gets done with his uh, yard leave. I, I just don't trust it because we've got water on the ground over there. And all I'm going to do, folks, is hit it with a little, what I got, a little oregano, a little pepper, a little mamacita's... Uh, what was that, barbecue? Oh, I thought that was a Worcestershire sauce. It don't matter. I'll go with the barbecue marinade. 
And then uh, when I throw the noodles in there, I'm just gonna cook the noodles in pure milk. And we're gonna come up with a nice pork, pork slash pork carbonara, pork Alfredo, pork spaghetti for my crew tonight. And we're gonna we're gonna eat good. You know, and like I said, all the logistics are still flowing. So every night she's going over, you know, getting a, getting a couple vegetables, a couple, couple carrots, a couple of potatoes, you know, getting a little bit of meat. So right now we are just pulling from the, from the economy, from the local economy. And if for some reason things get shut down, then we've got our, our uh, survival rations to take us through the storm. We're gonna be okay. But right now, we're not having to do that. We're not having to bust open cans of tuna or sardines uh, to survive. Because where we're at, we're fortunate. Everything's flowing. And that's my report, folks. That's my report. What did I say it was? Day 13? From the Luzon Enhanced Community Quarantine, which a lot of you have commented and said, uh, sounds like martial law, right? It's just how you want to call it. Fucking term, gov bullshit government terms or bullshit government terms. Yeah, it's the same as martial law in a way. I don't have freedom of movement. I have to have a fucking pass just to leave my house. And I have to go through numerous checkpoints. It sounds a lot like martial law, but uh, we're calling it an enhanced community quarantine. Whatever you want to call it, folks. Fuck it, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And these are these are the, uh, the drunks over there. Got, got like three, four drunks hang out. Uh, these are the conditions I've been dealt, and that's what I'm rolling with. So I hope you're doing well wherever you're at in the world. I know you're stuck indoors somewhere. Most of the world is. Thanks for listening to my voice. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that little Overstay Road sign down there. Become a subscriber. I should certainly appreciate it. And I keep telling people to hit that bell, but I've had a couple people report to me that the bell is not working. I guess YouTube with YouTube with all this uh, the stuff with the kids and stuff, they said if you have a, a children's channel, you can't use the bell. Fuck, I, I don't know, but this is what my, my buddy, uh, uh, one of you guys was telling me that maybe my bell is disabled because I, I show my kids in the video. I don't know. But if you if you want to get notified, you got to hit the bell. And if you subscribe and don't get notified or there's not a bell option, I guess they're penalizing my ass because I show Force G on the videos. Uh, wh whatever, you know, whatever. Okay, so there, there was one thing I wanted to note, and this is petty. But I'm just, you know, trying to tell you the changes that I see. So normally, Normally here we have a lady with a bicycle. She sells chicken and fish, sometimes pork. She's here every morning, every night. Um, you have the store across the way that sells vegetables. And you have uh, like a lady that makes pancakes and usually a kid that makes the fried chicken. Well, the kid that makes the fried chicken, he had, they have not been around since this started. And I guess because maybe they're, they're from uh, well, I know, they're from another province. So I think what happened was, uh, you know what, baby? Do me a favor, put all that ice in a Yeti cup. Put that ice in a Yeti cup and just bring the cup out. It'll stay and won't melt. Thank you so much. So the, the chicken, the, the chicken, the fried chicken kids are gone. I think they, they're in their province, what have you. But the change that I've seen today, sitting here, people watching on my breaks, I've seen guys that I've never seen before. Like you have one dude carrying a bucket and he's got fish in there. Another dude's toting a scale, you know, and they're walking around just, you know, yelling out fish for sale, fish for sale. And I've also seen several tricycles coming around selling vegetables. So I guess what, what is happening is that, you know, you know, people have lost their livelihoods but you're allowed to sell food. You know, the food vendors are allowed to stay in business. Business. 
So some of these folks who have been put out of out of business, whether they're tricycle drivers or jeepney drivers or whatever they do, they're getting to the point where they're they're you know being entrepreneurial. They're like, fuck it, let's go to the market today, get a bucket and a scale, which most people have a bucket and a scale, maybe not a scale, but um, they're going to the market, you know, buying some fish or getting some fish on credit. And they're walking around trying to sell it at a little bit of a markup so they got some money for that day. But all these people that are walking around like that, they're typically not, they don't do that. They don't come through here. You know, people have, you know, you got the stores, you've got the established vendors that are here every day. But I'm start, starting to see more and more people walking through. Like there was three kids that had a cart. They were pushing a cart with some vegetables and, uh, and fish. And then I saw all these kids carrying a bucket and a scale because they're in their parent within their parameters they can work they can continue you know supplying food so if they go around all day and make 50 pesos make a dollar well shit that's a kilo of rice they can eat that day so i just thought i'd bring that up that might be petty but i'm up here every day you know on this balcony watching the dynamics of the population and that's new that's out of the ordinary and i thought about it and i said you know what if it were me like you know if i was a tricycle driver and i got shut down or if i was a jeepney driver and got shut down i'd be doing the same shit. i'd get up in the morning go to the market get the best deal i could on some fish and vegetables and start going door to door till i sold it all and if you made it 50 pesos 100 you know a dollar two dollars you fucking eat for that day everybody's got a full belly all right, that's just uh, just something I'd bring up. Just thought I'd share that with you. I'm not sure why they're looking so serious because they took a big long nap today, but like Fatima is looking so mean. Yeah, she's a moody at times. Sometimes she's in a great mood, sometimes she's got a bad mood. But she slept about three damn hours a day. Of course, G's in a great mood. Helen's in a good mood, but she's looking a little serious. Folks. You know, Filipinas are great ladies, but they're still women. Women, no matter what culture, they're moody. They're, they get in a fucking uh, bad mood one day, good mood the next. And that's just women, folks. They're just, you know, nobody will ever be able to figure out a woman or her brain or how she thinks. It's just man can never figure that shit out. We can figure out the universe before we figure out women. I'm a fucking expert on it. I'm gonna tell you right now, you can't figure them out. Not 100%. I'm, I'm about 80% got them figured out. But I've been through a lot of them. See if we can't get a tune. Get a tune out of this here. Lodge 3.2 quart. Cast iron combo cooker. Got my favorite spatula I've had with me for years. Damn, I love that spatula. I know there'll be a day when this thing probably breaks or gives up the ghost, but uh, man, it's a good spatula right here. It's been a good one. All right, so what we do, we'll go with the on, hit the function, and I don't think the function matters. I'm gonna take this dude up to uh, up to like 160. I'm gonna swing around. I always start out cooking my meat. Oh shit, that's the that's the vegetables right there. Got fucking dogs barking. Goddamn dogs about to drive me crazy. There's so many fucking dogs here. What I'm gonna do is hit it with uh throw a little barbecue marinade on this meat. Oh shit, that's too much. Let's get it going on. Get a little oil in there. I'm gonna get high folks. About 160. Hell yeah, let's do it. Get that going. Oh, the smell coming off of that. It's got a little bit of Mama Citas. That's good barbecue marinade, folks, but also the mother's best uh, Worcestershire sauce. It's excellent. Love it. So the, the induction burners are very light. And, you know, we don't even keep this outside. We keep it inside. So it's, it's real easy to carry this out. Now, this thing is heavy, but 
If I really wanted to, I'd just leave the pot out here. But it's so much better cooking outdoors. It's just a beautiful night. Uh, got a nice cool breeze coming through. You don't worry about the grease popping on, getting on everything in the kitchen. Just an easier cleanup. I love cooking outdoors, my friends. All right, so I'm gonna do here. That's going. I always cook my meat first, so I know that 100% it's cooked right. Make sure it's done, or it kills all the uh, any unwanted microbes, bacteria, viruses, anything that's on that meat. That's why I cook my meat well done. So here we go, right here. Check this out. Mm -hmm. All the garlic, and I'd be a big shout out to uh, Helen of Troy for chopping up all the all the vegetables that is going in tonight's uh, tonight's meal, tonight's dish. She did all the prep work, so big shout out to you, Helen. Thank you very much. So I've, I've hit the oregano, a little uh, pepper. So it's to the point that this is this is this right here is almost done. That's like a racky good. So what I'm gonna do now? Thank you, Dawn. Just uh, whiskey, whiskey and Coke, please. So what I'm gonna do, now I hit the milk in here. Get the milk going before it starts to stick because it was uh, you know, basically uh, starting to get a little bit dry. So I'll put the milk to it. And I don't have the lid, so I'm gonna have to get beautiful Helen of Troy to bring me the lid of this thing. Going full Monty on this guy. Look at that whole thing of cow head pure milk going in there. All right, there we go. And folks here in Southeast Asia, they typically don't eat uh, a lot of dairy products, you know what I mean? A lot of this, you know, type, type of dishes like this. But I'm not from the Philippines. I'm from America, and I like, I like dishes like this. So tonight is gringo night here at the, uh, the penthouse suite, my friends. And there's got to be a more efficient way to do this. Look at that. Get all them bad boys on there. And Helen, baby, I need the lid to this, please. The top, the lid to the cast iron combo cooker. Thank you very much. Yeah. There we go, one more piece. There we go, and just get that in there. Let that go like that. Probably have to add some water to it. Yeah, the lid, the lid, baby. We're done with the oil. I actually did good tonight. I didn't, I didn't get drunk and put way too much oil in there. Make it too oily. So that's what we're gonna do. Let this bad boy get to boiling. Put the lid on there. And when it boils, when it boils down a little bit, then I'm gonna just throw the stick of butter in there for the flavor get it to thicken up folks beautiful Helen of Troy bringing that out thank you very much Dawn uh, and I went ahead and hit it with some water so I filled it up just a little bit and as usual the thing the thing's gonna be full of course G's climbing under that damn chair over there and just put the top on that lodge 3.2 quart and I'll probably have to turn the heat down I got on a full heat I'll probably kick it down to, uh, I don't know, about one, about 140. Pandemonium over here. <laughs> that boy right there keeps some ladies on their toes, my friends. He is very active. Let's take a look at that sunset over the mountains. Just tell me that ain't beautiful, folks. That is some kind of beautiful. And then let me take you over here to see the ladies. And just ask these ladies, ladies, what are you nibbling on? I'm cooking dinner. She got a big old cookie in her mouth. And this girl got some crackling corns. 
We can't wait for the foreign guy to cook dinner. My goodness. I do have one more thing to report. Maybe I've already touched on it. And if, if you're a foreign guy here in the Philippines or you, know, you have Filipino friends or if you're an OFW, you already know what I'm about to say. Folks, I'm getting calls, texts, messages from, you know, girls I've known from way back. Um, basically asking, begging, pleading, please help. We got no money and no food. Um, and I'm, I'm not the only one, you know, if, <laughs> if you've got a bunch of girls from way back in your phone, I'm sure they've been blowing up your phone too. And that's people are in survival mode, no money. And they're trying to get some money to buy food any way they can. You know, this morning her brother called. She's in there yakking her brother. And I'm like, what the hell was that about? But I already know what it's about, you know. He's calling up, you know, trying to trying to hustle some money. And you know, she told, hey look, we already gave all the money to to our mom. So if you want some you want some rice or some food or some money you need to go over to the house and talk to her we already gave the money to her but yeah i'm getting texts calls messages uh it's like girls are just going through their phones they're just going through their phones looking at who the hell can i text and maybe this guy will send me some money it's heartbreaking but it's reality and I'm, I'm not the only one, you know. So if you're a foreign guy and you're here, or you've got a Filipino family, uh, you, you're Filipino, you're married to a Filipina, you're in the West, wherever you're at, you know they're all hitting you up for money. I'm just reporting what's going on. I'm just telling you reality of what's going on. Um, You know, friends, family, old acquaintances, everybody's coming out of the woodwork. Just, you know, pleading for money so uh, they can buy some food. Just thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so I just I just made a fucking mess. I had it too high. So I'm sitting here, sitting there talking to you guys. And it's fucking bubbling over and Helen's like, hey, hey. So I just, I just made a huge fucking mess. Luckily, this little induction burner cleans up pretty easy. But if you wipe your rag across the uh, the keys, a lot of times it cuts it off. It's a pain in the ass. All right, so let me get a, get a baby shark on here. Oh, I just grab it like this. All right, see if I can't clean this son bitch up. Look at that fucking mess, folks. God damn what I get for not paying attention. You know what? If I was Gordon motherfucking Ramsey, I'd have a film crew and a studio to do this, but I guess to be Gordon fucking Ramsey, you gotta be mean to people to get a studio. I can't do it. I just, I just keep doing what I'm doing. See, this induction burner, it's not like a conventional burner. The only thing that, I mean, it's warm, but it's not gonna scald your hand if you touch the surface. It's like working like a microwave. The pan is hot, but the surface, the pan is very hot, the surface is just warm. I mean, it's hot, but it's not like you're touching a stove. There's another good thing about the induction burner. Hey, folks, it's got, it's got so thick. It's got so thick already from that water soaking into those noodles. I'll end up using this whole Jack Daniels bottle of water. Got to be done. But that's fine, because by, by the time the noodles are done, it'll thicken back up. And it'll just be the perfect Alfredo sauce. It'll be fucking delicious, trust me. All right, folks, got that thing chock full. Got that stick of butter in there. muffler here here in the Philippines folks when you hear a loud muffler basically the louder the muffler the dumber the motherfucking 
dude operating that motorbike is. That's just the way it is. This ain't like Harley's. For somebody to spend that money and fuck with them pipes, they're taking money out of their family's pocket to buy rice. So when you, the, over here, the louder the motorbike, the dumber the fucking operator. It's typical shithead. It's not the same as owning a Harley and got, got pipes on it and all. People are spending money to modify these fucking perfectly good motorbikes when they don't have money to pay the fucking utong at the goddamn sorry sorry store. Alright, so just got word. You know, when I say the grip is tightening, now, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I can go to Subic. Uh, so now I'm truly locked down to the brown guy. It's just every day, it's a, it's a just slowly tightening, 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 tightening grip. And I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you what's happening. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and go to Subic with my pass. Other than that, I can't get past uh, the Barangay. There's a checkpoint at the Barangay line from San Isidro to Santo Tomas. I'm confined to my Barangay now, truly, other than uh, three days a week. Uh, tomorrow's Monday, so I'm, I'm in fucking jail tomorrow. But on Tuesday, I will venture at least up to the market, you know, exercise my time that I am allowed to go out. And I may hump it back up to Subic, another walk, show you guys what's going on. Why? That's within my fucking parameters. All right, folks, I got Fatima out here taste testing. What do you think, baby? The noodle's done? And there, is that enough salt? Honey, listen. <laughs> folks, when this girl cooks, she puts so much salt on the meat. You, you, yeah, I can't eat it. Enough. Okay, well listen, here's what I recommend. When you sit down at the table with your plate, honey, you take the salt and you salt that to your tasting. But I don't want to sit here and act like I'm eating salt-cured ham. Okay, that's just not my flavor, all right? So you can put all the salt you want, but not in, not in the master pot here. Okay? So are the noodles done? Yeah, now you got noodles in your titties. Come here, I'll lick it off for you. Come here, I'll eat that. Beautiful. Is the pork done? No, that feels good. Huh? That feels good. The pork or the noodles? The pork. All right, let it boil a little bit. All right, no problem. I should have cooked that pork a little bit longer when I was stir frying it, folks. What do you see, baby? No people tonight? Yeah, one cool yeah, gonna, gonna take us. Yeah. One young buck gonna gonna run the gauntlet. Shit folks. One thing about cooking, it, it takes a lot longer to cook with this thing. And basically the induction burner is putting heat only on the bottom. When you put it on the coals, you're applying heat all around this side surface area. It's like you're doubling the cooking, you're, you're cutting the cooking time in half more or more because this additional surface area gets heated by the fire and the coals. Induction, it's only heated on that bottom surface area. That's why I prefer to cook over the coals. I want to thank you for joining me on tonight's update. A little cooking video. Listen to motherfucking Merle Haggard. Hell yeah. Life don't get any better than this. Folks, listen. I know you're cooped up at home. And for all my married folks, or if you're shacked up with your old lady. You know, back when I was a cop, you know, around Christmas time, like, people are cooped up together. They got time off. Not used to spending that much time with their spouse. <laughs> a lot of motherfucking wife beating was going on, you know, every year. Because people aren't used to being cooped up with family that much, right? So listen, if you're fucking locked down with your old lady wherever you're at, don't be a dick. 
All right, you're gonna have you're gonna have disagreements and arguments because you're not used to being around your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, uh, your significant other, whatever, whoever you're shacked up with, right? You're not used to spending that much time with people, and you know, just uh, exercise a little patience, a little understanding. I realize after, you know, two weeks, we're hunkered down here, basically in a prison. Uh, you know, like the least little bit of things, you know, causes a, a, a riff or whatever. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, say so you got to, you got to recognize <laughs> it's going to be a little added stress because you're just not used to spending that much time around your, your wife, your kids, whoever. Exercise some patience. Be a fucking man. Act like a fucking king. You know, don't let your temper get you get the best of you if your wife's fucking nagging you. Because that's what wives do. <laughs> Especially in America. These chicks here stress me the fuck out. They stress me out tonight. I'm going to tell you why. Folks, I'm out here doing an award-winning fucking cooking show. And the, the side effect of my award-winning cooking show is that these ladies eat like queens every night when I cook, you know? And I sat out here and they let my my glass go down dry for about two, three minutes at least. Two, three minutes, like three solid minutes, I didn't have a fucking drink in my hand. And then Helen pops her, her head out the door and I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm like in the fucking middle of the goddamn Sahara Desert. My throat was so dry. I was, I was about to die of fucking dehydration. You know, fuck this COVID-19 Chinese bat research virus. Folks, I was in dire fucking straits here on the balcony about to dehydrate. And I told these two bitches, I said, you know, you ain't, you, you ain't even care about me enough to come out here and make sure I got a damn whiskey and Coke. So she scurries back in there and she comes out. What does she do? Brings me a Captain Morgan and Coke. I said, listen, listen. Thank you for bringing my drink. I love you and you, you look beautiful. But this is a Captain and Coke and I specifically requested a Jim Beam whiskey and Coke. Now she knows the difference, but she didn't care to listen or pay attention to detail to bring me a whiskey and Coke. I said, okay, let me explain it to you, Dawn, how important my drink order is. I said, it's sort of like, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, if you say, my family has no rice, can you please send them some money? And I say, okay. And then I go send some money to your friend. That's, that's what it's like when I request a whiskey and Coke and you bring me a rum and coke because you're not listening. You're not paying attention to detail. You're not concerned about my welfare and my well-being. I had to explain that to her, you know, because I care about her. I care about her. I care about her family. Uh, same with wife number one. But when I specifically request a Jim Beam and Coke and you show up with a rum and coke, number one, it's delicious. But that's not what the king ordered. You know what I mean? Damn. You probably think I'm an asshole, don't you? <laughs> Come on. Look, these ladies, they speak English about like 50%. Let's just be honest. People like to think, oh, I'm going to the Philippines because they speak English. Folks, you don't know the Philippines real well, okay? You get out, you get out the side of the cities into the country. They don't speak English. They speak Bisaya. Hell, her family don't even speak good Tagalog. So what did you have to do is exercise some patience. And this is what I tell my ladies here. Several girlfriends I've had to tell this if they're from the village. I have to like turn to them and say, okay, ready to listen? Ready to listen in English? Okay, here, and I start talking slow. If I don't give them the preface, hey, ready to listen in English, I could talk for five minutes. 
Got to start over. Got to start over. So that works for me. And I'm, I'm not uh, patronizing them, patronizing them. I'm not being a smart ass. This is what works. And if somebody was going to come at me and give me some detailed instructions in Spanish, and they just started talking, it would take me a minute to, oh shit, the guy's talking Spanish, right? But if he came to me and he said, uh, you know, hey man, get ready to interpret some Spanish. I'd be like, all right, okay, hold on a minute. All right, I'm ready. Start, start, fire away, man. And then I would probably understand more because he gave me a warning. And that's what I found if I do with Fatima, I say, hey, look, baby, ready to listen in English? Because I got something important to tell you. And then she says yes, and then I do a slow communication. She understands. But that's what I did to Helen. I'm like, hey, baby, bring me, bring me another whiskey and Coke. Jim Beam and Coke, fill it up with ice. She was on Tagalog mode because she's in there, you know, chismasing with Fatima and they're on Facebook. They're in Tagalog mode. So when I bust out some English with a request, she wasn't ready for it. And you might think that's crazy psychology, but if, if you've never been over here, or you've never been out of your country, and you go pick a uh, country girl, a village girl in another country, whether you go to Guatemala <laughs> and pick a country girl, Philippines, Thailand, whatever, and they speak this much English, Give them a chance to, to be prepared to receive communication in the English language. Prepare them. And just tell them, hey, you ready? Here we go. I got some important to tell you. Are you ready to listen in English? Come on out here, darling. I gotta I need to tell the ladies the 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 subscribe or something. Okay, well it's almost ready, but come here. Are are you ready to listen in English? Huh? Well, the air con went off, baby. Cut that air con back on. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, so maybe you learned something from that. Maybe you agree, disagree. Um, that's my experience when there's a language barrier. Slow down your speech. Tell them to prepare to listen to English. Speak slowly and then go over it again. Very simplicity, simplistic like. And that's the way, because it's been so long, folks, that I've been speaking Spanish. You know, there was a time when I had a, a girl, my girlfriend was from Honduras. I had a girlfriend from Honduras back when I was married to my third wife or second wife, I can't remember. Anyhow, Back when I had my girlfriend from Honduras, I was emailing her back and forth every night. I was a pretty good, fluent motherfucker in Spanish. Read, write, speak. And since I moved over here, my Spanish is like fucking down to 20, 20, 30%. Anyhow, so if anybody wanted me to speak Spanish, give me a heads up, man, instead of just firing away at me and let me get my mind set, get it ready. Get your mind right, Luke. Get your mind right, Luke. You know what I'm talking about, cool hand Luke. Just get a little clean up on my, clean up on my cooking station where I don't attract any ants or anything. Leave my, leave my gloves out here so they bake in the sunshine, fucking dries them out. That sun is so hot, it kill all, any bacteria on them gloves, I promise you. Fucking sun is so hot on my cooking table, it fucking kill Ebola. Goddamn COVID-19, Chinese bat research virus, probably cure fucking AIDS. It gets so fucking hot out here every day. And that's a blessing, I'm not complaining, I love it. I usually, uh, if I use the chopping block, which I didn't use it tonight, but if I use my homemade chopping block, I leave this thing sitting out in the sun too. Ain't no microbes can survive as hot as this motherfucking sun gets during the day, I'm telling you. So, Folks, I want to thank you for joining me. Maybe I'll show you a clip of the ladies eating, but Force G's getting sleepy. I took so long to fucking cook because I'm, I'm making YouTube videos and I'm fucking drunk. <laughs> and that fucking induction cooker just takes forever. Forever. I'm a charcoal man all the way. 
The streets are fucking deserted. It's a goddamn ghost town. Got the Baron guy patrolling. And they're not fucking playing around no more. They're taking, they're taking names. So, uh, I'll just say thank you for joining me, my friends. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.